degrees and raining not exactly cruising weather might as well tear the Camaro apart last video we fully blacked this thing out and it looks so sick i'm absolutely in love with it powder coated all the trim the mirrors the door handles the door lock cylinders the windshield wipers tinted all the windows painted up some of the window uh, pieces there thing looks amazing absolutely in love with this car and i've been driving it i think i have over 200 miles on this thing since we reset the odometer basically in the last video i've been driving it every single nice day and it's been really nice in New England here. I think we had like a seven or nine day stretch of like 75 and sunny. But now we're looking at like a seven day stretch of 50 to 60 degrees and raining. So I've had a box of parts here or boxes of parts here right in front of me that I've been wanting to bolt onto this car for a long time. Some of them have been here for over two years. And uh, I think now's a good time to do it since we got a stretch of crappy weather where I won't be driving the car. But uh, before I show you that, Let's get the car up in the air and I'll show you what the current parts on the car are that we're going to be swapping out.
Yep, it's a big brake kit. So when I bought this car, it came with the brakes that you see on it now. These are Willwood, obviously Willwood disc brakes, four piston front, I believe, yeah, four piston rears as well. Definitely a nice kit, definitely nice brakes. And for the weight of this car and street use, those brakes would probably be 100% fine. They feel great, they stop the car great. But everybody wants bigger brakes, right? So I picked up these calipers off of a C6 Z06, just like my dirty one right here. Just like those. Like two years ago for my original 69 Camaro, came with these rusty rotors too, which I'm not gonna be using, but I just wanted to show you guys the size of these things. I think these are like 360 or 370 millimeter rotors. Big six piston PBR calipers. These are the old pads too. So yeah, 300 bucks for these. I think they normally go for like seven or 800 or even a thousand for the two front ones. And uh, like I said, paid short money for them. So in these boxes is the bracket kit we should need from Core 3. Haven't installed these yet, but highly recommend these guys so far. Tobin over at Core 3 answered all my questions really quickly. So great customer service so far. Not sponsored by them or anything, but happy with the customer service so far. So there's bracket kits in there, rotors. I got new pads, uh, new, I forget what these things are called, but you can see they're all rusty. Couldn't have those going back on. And then new hubs, which we'll get into in a second. But basically, in order to get those on this car, you need a set of Chevy drum hubs. So I got hopefully, I think, all the parts that we'll need to make this install happen. So let's get everything unboxed, check out what we got. Here's what we got, like I said, new rotors. These things are absolutely massive. I uh, got the new pins for the calipers. Here's our new hub assemblies. Here's the brackets from Core. So these are what the calipers, I guess this side, yeah, will bolt to, and then this will bolt to the spindle. Hardware, here's the correct uh, banjo bolts, I believe, for the C6 calipers assorted uh, wheel bearings, seals, all that stuff. So I think that's everything we need. I guess I didn't order new pads because I probably looked at these and realized they're pretty much brand new. Um, I could always order new ones. I might still order some because I remember with my car when I still had stock pads in that one, the stock ones were extremely dusty. So we might get a different set of brake pads, but either way, we could always use those for now. But I think this is everything we're gonna need uh, to do this big brake kit. So I think the first step is gonna be uh, to get these Woolwoods off, get this disc off, and just start doing some test fitting. Speaking of test fitting, we gotta talk about these wheels. Saw a lot of comments in the last videos about, hey, you should get wheels to you know match the black trim, and couldn't agree more. Matter of fact, I ordered some new wheels for this thing back in March, and uh, I think the ETA right now is mid-July. So that's neat, but like I said, I, I agree with you guys, I got wheels on the way for this thing. The US Mag Ramblers that are on here, you know, they're not terrible. They're not, they're really, really not bad. I just, it's not the wheel that I would have picked, especially for a full pro touring build like we're doing. Don't worry, I got wheels on order for this thing. Hopefully they're here in the next month or so. We can get them bolted up and get this, you know, exterior looking. But yeah, for now, let's start disassembling these Woolwood brakes, start test fitting some of the new stuff and see how we did as far as ordering the right parts. One eternity later. So it's been a few days. I was uh, out of the state traveling for work, um, but I'm back now. While I was out, I was doing some research. I think we need to turn these hubs down. So hopefully you guys can see this, but if we look here, you can see there's a gap between the face of the hub and the face of the caliper, or the, or the disc here rather. And that's because this radius is, not, is, is too large to sit flush uh, on the disc here. 
We can demonstrate that over here with the new rotor. But basically, this is not able to sit flush in there, even though right now it's up against cardboard. So, these are about 5.95 inches in diameter. I think we need to turn them down on a lathe to about 5.90 or so. I'll bring a rotor to test. But yeah, so we gotta bring these to a lathe. I got a buddy who's got access to one, so we're gonna quickly turn these down. While I'm at it, I'm gonna knock out these studs uh, because they're not long enough. Even though this isn't fully seated, you can tell that's definitely not gonna be long enough to safely bolt the wheel on. So I've got some Moroso studs on order. Uh, so let's knock these out, head to the machine shop, turn these down, and then uh, we'll start some assembly. All right, well, I got some updates. Got these uh, hubs turned down so that they now fit and seat properly in the rotor. Also added a little chamfer on the edge there to give it a little bit more room. And got my Moroso wheel studs pressed in. Not only are they longer and now protrude from the disc farther so that we can actually get our wheel bolted up safely, um, but I feel a little bit better about Moroso wheel studs as opposed to whatever China brand was in here because these are China hubs. But I think this is good now. So, one week later, <laughs> let's finally get to tearing this thing apart and uh, getting some stuff test fit.
Look at the size of those things. I mean, just look at that. Look at the size comparison. Well, we got the C6 Z06 calipers on there. Got our Willwoods off. Hubs assembled, everything pressed on. Got our studs pressed in. Everything's good to go. Check it out. So fitment so far seems great. Uh, looks like our brake line is gonna be able to hook up right back here with our banjo fitting, no issues. Calipers bolted up, I don't see any interference. It looks insane, love it. Same thing on this side. Everything looks good, clearance looks good. I mean, these calipers are gonna be, they're gonna look so sweet behind the wheels. So I think we're good. Cast and is on and torqued, wheel bearings packed. I haven't put the pin in yet because I still need to put the dust cap on. And like I said, we're just doing some test fitting. But I think we're good to go. Got my Willwoods all off over here, lined up all the components. So now I can sell these as a kit to you know offset some of my cost into this project. But uh, these will make a nice upgrade for someone with drum brakes. And like I said, they stopped the car just fine. I just had these and you know, you're not gonna not throw these on when you got them, shoo. But there is a problem. Well, two problems really. First one is a fitment problem and uh, I can't really explain it. So let me just show you. Uh-oh, wheel doesn't fit. Hits the caliper like a solid inch away from the wheel or from the surface of the disc brake there, the rotor. So the offset on my current 18 inch US Mag Rambler wheels is not gonna work. Hopefully that's solved with my new wheels if they ever come in. But in the meantime, I've got a plan. I've had these wheel spacers kicking around uh, from an old project. I think these are about an inch. If I need less, I can order a different set. If I need more, we can order a bigger set. But I think if I bolt these babies up, hub centric wheel spacers, uh, that should offset the wheel enough that we can clear the caliper which is basically what the Willwood kit did. I was looking at this a little closer after the fact. You can see the Willwood, you know, basically bolted a spacer to the hub of the disc to space the wheel out enough to clear the Willwood caliper. So same idea. So I guess not too surprising that it wouldn't just bolt to a stock giant C606 caliper. So that's the first problem. Second problem is I like yellow. Yellow is a good color, but it's not the color for this car. Blue, blue is the color for this car. So you guys probably saw this coming. Actually, God, that yellow and blue contrast does kind of look good, but eh, forget about it. I have some extra paint from when I painted that intake manifold. It's a Chevy color. I think it's called Blue Bayou. Um, it's a, it was a factory Camaro color. I absolutely love it. Got a ton of flake in it. Really pops. I mean, we're in, you know under the hood in the in the garage right now, but in the sun, that intake is insane. Uh, I think that blue is going to look really good on these calipers. If you guys didn't already know, huge fan of blue, so that's basically the color I'm going for. So we're going to do that, and I also have a couple stickers that is going to complete this. So on the front, we're going to paint these blue. Then we're going to put our sticker on there, and then we're going to clear over it so it'll look completely factory, basically. Just like that. These are not factory color. These are actually a ZR1 color, but they basically should look very similar to this when they're done. And then for the rear, which are still a Willwood brake, got some Willwood stickers here. So we can get this off, paint all of our calipers the same color blue. Factory style stickers should look like this. 69 Camaro came with these brakes from the factory. So with that, I got a bit more work ahead of me. Got to take these calipers off. Got to get the rear calipers off, got to get everything prepped for paint, and then let's spray some color, get this brake project finished up. Pro tip, you guys working on brakes, need to remove a caliper or open the system for any reason, get yourself some silicon plugs. These are actually for powder coating. Come in a bunch of different sizes. Just 
plug up the brake line or caliper or whatever you're using prevents a big mess and everything from landing on the floor and basically draining your system all the way down to nothing. So no drips, no nothing. Nice clean, it'll be ready to go when we have our calipers painted. Let's keep going. Oh yeah, beautiful day out. That means the paint booth is open. Because the funny thing about the paint booth is it's my driveway. Many hours later, next day here, forgot to say that, many hours later, got the calipers all prepped, degreased, disassembled, masked off, got the Willwood calipers primed because uh, where the Willwood writing is was actually bare metal. So got that primed in, then blocked and sanded. We can still see the Willwood outline, but don't worry. It's actually good because that'll give us a good place to place our sticker, and then we'll just bury it all in clear coat. Got everything sanded and scuffed, then degreased again. Uh, masking takes forever because you gotta get into each individual one of these corners on both sides, on all the calipers, all the mounting surfaces. Got all my ports plugged, capped off, taped. Many hours of work. But like any paint job, it's all in the prep. We're not quite done yet. Still need to degrease these one final time, maybe tack cloth, and then we should be good to go. I'm using the original caliper pins. I'm gonna leave those in there while we paint, obviously because that's a perfect way to protect the threads. Then hopefully while the paint is still a little bit tacky, pull these out, and then when they're completely dry, we'll put in our brand new hardware and rebuild everything. But other than that, I think these things are ready for paint. I haven't painted in like, I don't know, six months, eight months. I think the last thing I painted was the Mercedes front bumper. So we'll see if I still got it. I'm gonna go dig that blue bayou. I think it's called blue bayou. Paint out of the basement and uh, get ready here. I'm gonna have to figure out some way of mounting these so I can get the best angle at them. I'm not gonna bother with hanging them or anything like that. I'm just gonna, just gonna work around it, and make it work. But these things should look awesome when we're done. So let's get to painting.
Try not to have a meltdown right now. So it's Friday at like six o'clock and uh, just realized I don't think I have enough paint to do these calipers. So I'm just gonna pray that there's a paint guy at the parts store tomorrow morning who can mix me up a pint of blue bayou and uh, we'll go from there. In the meantime, here's what the color looks like. Awesome, awesome metallic blue. Of course, it's not well mixed on this little pad here, but like I said, pretty darn close to the current caliper on my C6 Z06. I had a thought that, you know, I could use, I have tons and tons of Ford Sonic Blue, which is slightly darker. And I figured I could maybe cover all these with Sonic Blue and then do the, just the top coat with the Blue Bayou, but I just don't know. I think I might've already reduced this too. I just don't know if I have enough. And I really should have checked because I painted that intake manifold a year ago but I guess I just assumed that I had enough, but I don't think I do. So I really pooched myself here, boys. Damn it. But uh, I'll switch gears here, work on one of the other 10 projects I got going on here, which will probably be in another video. But meantime, maybe the paint guy can save me in the morning. We'll see, but for now, pause. All right, well, the good news is the paint store was open on Saturday. They mixed me up a pint. So Tucker and I got the paint. Bad news is, unlike yesterday, it is raining and 100% humidity today. So I don't think we're gonna be doing any painting today. We'll see about tomorrow. It might be more of the same, but you never know. So next time you see me, we should be doing the last prep of these calipers and spraying them. GM blew me away. Come on rain, clear up. morning. It's uh, about 11 a.m. and it is already 80 degrees and 100% humidity, so it's moist out here. Not exactly ideal painting conditions, but once again, 
I think there's supposed to be about seven or eight days in a row of rain, so we gotta take advantage of this while we can. Take a look. what I tell you guys about this color? The sun's going away now, it's not gonna gleam as much, but tons and tons of flake. Just an awesome, awesome blue. Came out really, really good. So that's, I think, three coats of base, because technically I think you were supposed to cover with black before, so needed a lot of blue to cover up the yellow, but three coats of base, three coats of clear. I like to do a light first coat of clear, give the next coat something to grab to, and then two heavy coats of clear to minimize orange peel. I mean, which there's absolutely none of. Looks insane. So these are gonna need a long time to dry up now, so I'm gonna leave them out for a little bit, then we'll put them in the garage. And uh, once they're cured, we can get them assembled and uh, see how they look. So let's uh, fast forward in time to let these things cure and I'll catch up with you guys then. Look at them things. Matches my toolbox almost. It's been a couple days, let these things cure in the garage, in the sun a little bit, then back in the garage. And then last night I even put them in my powder coating oven and you know baked them at like 150 degrees for like 20 minutes and uh, then let them cool down and cure all day today. So these things should be fully 100% cured. They look so good. Really happy with how these came out. So I'm so excited to get them back on the car get this thing back on the ground. It's been up in the air for like weeks at this point, but it doesn't really matter because it's been raining out. But hopefully the weather clears up soon. I'd like for it to be ready. So let's get right back to work. Let's get these things reassembled with all their new pads, pins, hardware, everything. Let's get them back in the car, see how they look.
there anything more American than big brakes, baby? Look at that. That looks so sick. Can't get enough of that blue. Got the calipers on both sides in the front, both sides in the rear. Our big Z06 rotors, Z06 calipers, brand new pads, brand new pins, brand new retaining hardware. Everything torqued and got blue Loctite on it. I got my brake hoses on back here with my new banjo fitting. Uh, so these are gonna, these are the original Willwood hoses, stainless steel braided. Those are gonna work just fine. The rear was obviously basically just a rebolt on because I didn't change anything. And these brakes only have like 700 miles on them. So we're good. Both sides, all four corners. Good to go. And because we blocked those lines, like I said earlier in the video, we didn't lose all that much fluid, but we do still need to bleed these brakes. So let's open up the master, top off the reservoir, use my motive uh, brake bleeder so that I can do this by myself, which is good because I'm here by myself. Uh, see if we can't get these things bled, pop the wheels on and see, see if this thing still stops. That'd be cool. If it does still stop, see if it stops any better. I don't know, we'll see. Let's get back to work. Well, that was the shortest montage ever. We are dead in the water, boys. Dead in the water. So my motive brake bleeder has failed me. I'm always saying you guys should have one of these. I still do, link in the description, but this car has got a Willwood master cylinder. So motive makes this plate that basically goes over the top of that to pressurize the system. And unfortunately, after topping off the fluid, I realized the plate is not big enough to cover this. And obviously if it's not big enough to cover this, we're not gonna be able to pressurize the system and therefore we won't be able to bleed the brakes. No problem, right? I got this old school piece of junk, Pittsburgh Harbor Freight vacuum bleeder, right? Nope, tried that, didn't work. Pedal still feels softer than Rosie O'Donnell's stomach. All right, Chris, no problem. You know, the other two methods aren't working. Just go to the old school tried and true way of, you know, grab your old lady or a buddy or someone to push the pedal. You say open, close, probably get in a fight, but it works. Nope, can't do that either. It's Friday, 4th of July weekend. Everyone is gone to the lake, to the ocean, to the beach, whatever. No one is around, it's just me. So, we're stuck. I was really hoping to end this video, you know, driving, jamming on the brakes, you know, walking up all four and just talking about how great the performance is, but this is it. We're gonna end the video here. It's Friday afternoon of a five, four or five day weekend. I'm tired, I'm sweaty. I'm gonna go clean up a little bit, find myself a cold beer and a body of water and I'm gonna chill for a little bit. And I'm gonna get you guys this video out, which should be like 40 or 45 minutes at this point. I promise we'll have this thing on all fours driving real soon. I got a bunch of other mods over there on the table that you guys can't see that we're gonna be putting on next week as well. So don't worry, just gonna take a couple days break for our country and then we'll get right back on it. That being said, I hope you guys have an awesome 4th of July. Be safe, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Have some fun, relax a little bit. I'll see you in the next video.